Welcome back to Lower Keys Living, everybody. And this week we are out targeting blackfin tuna. And I'm going to share with you some tips, strategies that I use when I'm out looking for a blackfin tuna. As you can see, I got my oldest daughter out. She's my boat driver today. And you can see we are in some lumpy water. Video doesn't do quite just as how big the rollers were. We had a few coming almost close to coming over the bow of the boat when we're out here. And it takes a lot to cover up the, the angler. Um, so join us. I'm going to give you some tips, strategies, things that we did and how we end up changing our strategies on this day. And then ultimately I'll share with you the end result, which were a couple of black and tuna on board this evening. So thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Hope the information I give today is helpful in you getting your black and tuna. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's jump right into this and talk about strategies for fishing for tuna. First of all, I always have a game plan in mind when I'm leaving the dock. Um, know what I'm going to do, have a pretty good idea of it, but then also be ready to change the plan based on conditions, what you're finding out on the water. In this case, we are coming out from Kaijo Key along this line. And I almost always, if you've watched my other videos, I hit the Wilkesbury a lot. This is just a massive ship that's split in two out here. It has two great big sections, both giving a lot of structure off the bottom. So if my plan was to head out for that. And then I've got a normal course where I come out, cross the Wilkesbury, head out to this wreck, keep going on this one out to about 400 feet of water, then turn back in, cross parallel to my line going out, Hit this one at 240 feet of water and then keep going this way and there's another wreck up here at about 175 feet that puts me directly south of the Luki Marine Sanctuary. So what this does, it really lets me cover a lot of different depths of different places out here and cover some structure that might hold fish. So one thing that we do, that I always do is I always get my, all my lines, trolling lines set by the time I hit 175 feet of line or water. So when I'm out here today, because we are targeting tuna, I've got two surface lures out on my outriggers, and then I've got one deep diving uh, nomad. And it was a pink nomad, uh, 35 foot diving one, I have about 100 feet of line out. And the reason I use the outriggers when I'm going for tuna, they don't like coming into the prop wash or the wake of the boat. Uh, so I have those outriggers, get those outside, and I set those about 150 feet behind the boat. So they're well away from prop wash and wake. Uh, so the tuna will come in after those. Uh, so on this particular day, on our way out, because we had some heavy seas, good three, three and a half feet, and we were taking it on the bow. We've had a lot of um, heavy winds the last few um, days coming up this way from Cuba. So we're taking that heavy swell straight on the nose. Uh, my oldest daughter was with me. And it was just an uncomfortable ride. So we changed up our plan a little bit. So when we got to the Wilkes-Barre, we crossed over. And as you stay tuned, I'm going to show you some images of the Wilkes-Barre on the bottom. But instead of coming out on my normal route, we turned right and decided to go with the uh, with the waves and make it a much more comfortable ride. So that was our game plan. That's what we ended up changing over to. So as we came out here across the Wilkes-Barre, we made this right hand turn and there's these two really nice mounds that hold a lot of fish here and here. The first one up here right off of Maryland Shoals. This is really popular with people fishing for yellowtail. Um, it's a good area for looking for wahoo and kingfish along the edges here that are in here feeding. Also seen a number of sailfish in here. So my game plan was to come in and run a figure eight along those two. But on my way in, I hit about 175 feet of water and our deep diving lure took off. Um, I turned the camera on and within a second or two, it had cut through the 150 pound test line that I had on that leader that I had on that deep diving lure. So we pulled that one in. So now we are just running our two outriggers with the two surface lures. So we did stick to that plan. We came around, we looped around this, so much more comfortable and closer to shore here. And then we came back around, made a loop around this one. Really wasn't seeing anything, but as I came around, I was gonna complete this figure eight coming up this way, looping around. But when I got here, I started seeing a number of birds flying in this direction. They were scattered, but they were consistently over the same depth of water. So one thing to note, if you're seeing birds flying north to south, um, 
they're out looking for fish and trying to find where the fish are. Uh, if you see them flying east to west like this, typically that's the depth where they've been finding the fish at. Uh, so a good indication of that's where you, the fish are, uh, the depth you should be looking at. So we continued on our way out here. And when I got to this point, I stopped seeing the birds. Uh, so I decided I'm just gonna continue on, split the Wilkesbury and then head home. Um, so we kept coming, we came out, split the Wilkesbury back in, but then I got that same depth here at about 200 feet. I started seeing more lines of birds or scattered three or four or five, six at a time, but all over the same depth. So just kept coming in and this is heading right back in the same line that we took on the way out. And my plan was to have got to this 200 foot depth line. And this is the line, this dotted line is about where the birds were flying. Uh, you can see the Wilkesbury is right here. What I do is I will go get on that depth and I'll travel for two and a half minutes at a 45 degree angle away from that line. And then I'll make a 90 degree turn and go for five minutes crossing that line. And that way I'm spending about two and a half minutes on each side of that depth line, trolling back and forth. That's letting me cover, cover that depth thoroughly where the birds are finding the fish. So we did make this turn coming out here. When I got here, I was seeing, wasn't seeing quite as many birds. So I stayed on this line right here, cut across the Wilkesbury and thought I'd come back in and we were kind of getting tired, weren't, wasn't seeing a lot of action, so we thought we'd just head straight back in. But as soon as we crossed this line in here, that's when our lines left. Both lines went off and we were into some tuna right there. So again, the birds were the big giveaway as to what depth those tuna were working. So stuck with that. We didn't got lucky, we landed both of those tuna on there. Um, and both nice sized fish so I was really happy with that uh, with the success and again the birds were the key to us finding those fish. I do want to take a moment show you the structure of the Wilkesbury really quick. Uh, this is an expanded view and it's kind of blowing out away from it a little bit but you can see how much it rises off the ocean floor. Um, ignore all this noise chatter from the chop and turbulence that's what you're seeing it here. But when you get a really good bait fall and there's some really active fishing going on there, it will look a lot more like this. So here you can see how much this superstructure rises from the bottom and all the way up to almost 140 feet of water and then drops back down. And you can see the bottom here right at about 240 feet of water. So that's a lot of structure, just a massive structure rising up. Holds a lot of great fish. That's why you see so many people out here drigging. Uh, people do a lot of bottom fishing out here, but you'll lose a lot of hooks and lures because there's so many things tangled down here and so much fishing line lost down here. Um, but just great fishing spot. Uh, but this is what ideally what I'm looking for. You see this massive bait ball out here and there's things working it. This is not noise chatter. This is another column of fishing here. That's what I'm looking for out here at the Wilkesbury, which is why I frequent it so much. There's another wreck called the Kendrick a few miles west of this spot that I also recommend highly. So those are just a few tips. If you want to watch us fight the fish, uh, stay tuned for that. And otherwise, we will see you next week on Lower Keys Living. Thanks for joining us. All right, so we've got two fish on here. Both of them are tuna. Didn't know that for sure yet, but figuring just as strong as they were fighting that they are likely not mahi. You didn't see any birds working on this one. So pretty sure just by the fight they were putting up that we've got two tuna on. Here my poor daughter's trying to keep the line tight on the starboard side one while filming me and reeling in the fish at the same time. Um, there is just switching the camera around our center mount camera to focus on me. Um, and you'll see we'll switch over to that camera here in just a second. You can see the rod and the rocket holder there. That's the one that had the deep diving lure on that got cut by what I'm pretty sure was a good size wall who cut through that one. So here, uh, if you look straight off the engines in the back about 200 yards off, there's two boats. They're jigging right over the uh, Wilkesbury. You can see how close we were to the wreck on that. And here I am just bringing in the fish on your right hand side. You can see how bent that rod is and how strong this fish is fighting. Um, and just grabbing the gaff right now. So bringing that one in, my daughter's filming with the other camera and reeling in one handed. Uh, so doing a bit of work on the other side. 
uh, but just bringing this fish in um, again it's fighting really hard love the fight of the tuna and these are also probably among my three favorite eating fish down here especially the, the fresh uh, tuna just amazing to eat they are a sushi grade fish down here where you can just cut the fish the meat right off the fish and eat that here on the boat fresh off um, I don't do that very often. If I've got a big group that likes sushi, we'll do that and bring some vinegar and spices out and um, dip those in and do that. Not this particular day, just bringing this one in. You can see as this one gets closer to the boat, it is putting up a huge fight. Does not like the looks of the boat. Meantime, my, other is, my daughter is one-handed filming and reeling in the other fish with one hand. Uh, I'm just trying to keep that line tight. Um, you can see we got up against the boat, you can see it right there. And nice having a second person on board today to get that gaff. Um, and here I'm just gonna grab the leader, um, get this pulled up so I can get the gaff into it. Yeah, get a good, good gaff right through the tail on this one. Get this one board, I dropped this one and now I've gotta go get the other fish on board. It'll take just a second here before the camera switches around to the other fish. Uh, but again, just a nice fighting fish. You can see the wind has died down. Don't have quite amount, the same amount of surface chop, but you can tell um, a little bit, but it doesn't quite do it just as just how big the swells were out here today. Um, the image stabilizer on the camera does a good job stabilizing things out. Um, but you'll be able to switch around here in a second. You'll see that other fish coming on. My daughter actually did a good job of getting this one really close to the boat. Uh, you'll see the leader come up here in just a second and it is straight down. Um, there's a leader, I'll grab that leader, pull the fish up, get a gaff in it, and we'll get this one on board. And that is tuna number two. Um, really nice fishing out there. Again, great eating, I was pretty happy with this. Because of how lumpy it was and what a beating we took, we decided not to troll that depth at all. I was happy with the two tuna on board. That's going to give us some fresh fish for the week. Um, get these cut up. There's a ton of meat. These guys are really fit, strong fish. Um, so happy with those two. That one goes in the ice box. I'll get the second one show you that second one in just a second. So yep, there is fish number two. Yes, that is two. That one goes in the cooler. And then again, yes, I was running the two surface baits off the outriggers, 150 feet or so back behind the boat. So I'm keeping those outside the wake. And yes, I was running those pink feather billy baits on both of those outriggers, um, caught those on. No bait, uh, anything added to those, just run those straight and play and they do a great job skimming across the surface. So that was it. We packed up, headed back into the dock here to clean those fish, got in before dark, which makes it nice, uh, beautiful evening out on the water. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Lower Keys Living. Hope this information was helpful.